Hi, my name is Jason Webster. I'm Bex Hybrid, Central Illinois Practical Farm Research Director. Today we are in Downs, Illinois at our Central Illinois PFR site, and we are looking at different corn planters. Corn planting season is going to be right around the corner in just a few short weeks away, and we want to make sure that when we're out planting, our planters are in top running condition. So what we want to do today is run through just a few checklists of planter maintenance to make sure these planters are running correctly. One of the first things we want to look at on our planter is we want to check the drive tires. Or the uh, tires are going to be holding this planter up in the field. Some of these tires are going to be used uh, to drive the planter, so it's going to be very important to check how much air pressure is in these tires. The amount of air pressure in this tire, if, if it's off, if it's off of what the owner's manual recommends, it could affect how level our planter is. And we'll talk about levelness of the planter in here in just a little bit. But, but making sure that that planter is level is going to allow those disc openers, any coulters in the front, to run completely level in the field, and that's going to be very important. We want to make sure we've got proper PSI in these tires, not only when you're checking them in the shop on a cement floor, but we also want to check the tire pressure when we're out into the field in normal planting conditions. If these tires are worn, if we've got poor tread on them, we just need to replace the tire, making sure we've got right PSI and correct tire height. Checking the levelness of a planter is actually a fairly easy thing. And what we want to do is we want to check this main toolbar on the, uh, on the planter and make sure that this is level when the planter's sitting down. And we're going to be on a concrete floor here in the shop, and it's a great place to start checking levelness. But the one thing you're going to want to do is not only do this in the shop on a nice level floor, but you're going to want to test the levelness of your planter in the field while you're in normal planting conditions. You're definitely going to want to do that as well because this planter, once we get it into soil, is going to drop down deeper and it could actually change the pitch of the planter. But here's how we check the levelness of a planter. We're simply going to use a level and we're going to place this on top of the toolbar and, and we're going to make sure that going through the field this planter toolbar is nice and level. And uh, you can see we've got our level here on the toolbar and that bubble is right there in the middle indicating that we've got a nice level toolbar right now and we should be setting the stage for proper planting conditions. But again, we're right in the shop, we're on a concrete floor, we definitely may have to make sure we do this once again when we're out into the field to make sure these row units are completely level. One of the other things we want to inspect on our planter is the parallel linkage. These are going to be the arms that, that help keep this row unit level throughout the field. If these bushings and the parallel linkage get worn out, we'll get play in this row unit. It'll cause chatter as we're going through the field and it could actually uh, affect how level the planter is. And again, if our planter gets uh, out of levelness, we start coming up, it's going to affect the way the, the seed is being dropped into the seed trench. It's going to affect the way um, uh, our coulters are running up front, our residue managers, and even our tailing system in the back. So one of the last things to do as far as getting this planter level is checking these parallel uh, linkage arms and making sure that these bushings are okay. Now we're going to go ahead, the way to ch check these bushings is to get on the rear of the planter and actually move these units up and down and side to side to check to see if there's any play in these bushings. One of the next things we, we want to inspect on our planter is these disc openers. These disc openers are going to be important because that's what's making our seed trench and uh, we want to make sure that that's as consistent and done right as possible. One of the things we want to do is we want to measure these seed discs. Anytime we get to about 14 and a half inches we want to replace these discs. So simply take these off and uh, simply take the disc opener off and measure and find out where these discs are at. This one is almost 14 and a half so this particular um, disc opener has been replaced with a new one, but 14 and a half is pretty much your magic number. Anytime you get under that, you're probably not going to be able to uh, um, uh, implement a proper seed trench. One of the things a, a disc opener needs to do is create a V in the very front. And this, this V trench is going to uh, uh, show us that this disc opener is actually touching to create that V trench. And one of, the, one of the easy things we can do, and we need to do this multiple times during the growing season, but we can use business cards or a piece of paper. And what you can do is take these business cards and slide them in between the two disc openers and just slide them down to where the disc openers touch and keep that business card right in there nice and tight, nice and snug. Take the other business card, come in from the bottom side and hold them in, hold that card in there where it's snug. And then we're going to measure the distance between these two business cards. So we take our tape measure and we're going to measure here. And we're over two inches um, in distance 
between these two business cards. Now you'll want to check with the owner's manual of your planner. Uh, some of this distance is going to vary based on the model um, of your planner, but just make sure that you've got the proper distance here of these two discs touching to make sure we get a V trench. When those disc openers actually touch, we've got these disc openers coming down. We're going to touch right here and that creates our V trench. So when you think about it, we've got our seed tube right here on the inside of these disc openers it's, and it's going to place or singulate a seed right into the bottom of this trench. Then we've got a seed firmer coming right on top of this seed just to press it right in the bottom of this trench. We have no air pockets and we can get a fairly quick germination and emergence with a system like this. If the disc openers become worn, we lose the ability to get the V trench and, and we go to what's called a W trench. Let me illustrate that. So with worn disc openers, we end up with openers that do this. And so we've got a, a set of disc openers that are not touching in the front and we end up with this, this, this uh, W right here in the middle. And so when we uh, have our seed tube coming down and placing seed, that seed can actually fall on either side of this wedge right here and it's gonna create air pockets. And this seed, okay, whatever side it falls on has the potential of emerging through the soil later. And we all know the consequences if we have seed emerging later. Anytime we get one collar off out in the field, that corn plant could actually produce no yield whatsoever. Or if it does produce some yield, it actually could be severely reduced. So we want to make sure we eliminate any potential for this W, uh, w trench in the field. And simply all we need to do is replace our disc openers if we're not achieving this. One of the other things we can do is maybe our seed, um, our seed disc openers are in good shape, but we need to check the spacers on those uh, disc openers and make sure we remove some of the spacers and we move them close, closer together, and then we can get those discs to touch in the front, and then we go back to the proper V trench and we're in good shape. One of the things we always want to check on our, uh, on our planter is our drive chains on each individual row unit. We want to make sure that these chains aren't, aren't able to be uh, uh, binding up because that's going to affect potentially singulation of our seed. Anytime this chain is able to catch, whether it's due to rust or whether it's being worn out, it can catch a little bit and that'll affect a nice smooth transition of the planter being able to drop seed. So replace these drive chains, uh, chains as necessary and keep following the chains all the way back. Now this particular planter has um, insecticide boxes and so we've seen this a lot in past years where these drive chains for the insecticide boxes get kind of rusted up or the, the mechanical drive in the box itself gets bound up and that will affect how free this chain is moving, how smooth it's running um, and, and hopefully you know, we get it running real nice so it doesn't affect singulation. One of the other things we need to do is make sure we're checking the, the drive chains on the transmission. Again, this is going to be where we set our population. We need to make sure that these chains are in good shape. Again, if there's any inkling that these chains are worn, I would just replace them immediately. Make sure that these are lubed up really good. Make sure the sprockets are in good shape. And make sure these rubber space, uh, spacers in here are in good shape as well to maintain those uh, sprockets from moving. Inspection of seed tubes is also very important. We want to remove the seed tubes from each and every row unit and make sure that they're in, uh, in good shape. One of the things you'll want to particularly look for is right at the end of the seed tube. This is a seed tube that we found that was broken and uh, this, this, could, um, this could affect singulation of the seed. If that seed dropping from the seed tube, seed will be coming out this way. If it hits one of these broken flaps or a piece of the seed tube, it's going to affect the singulation. So we could potentially have a skip or we could have a double based on where this seed goes. So um, if this happens, we need to do two things. Not only do we need to replace the seed tube to fix this problem here, but now we need to find out for the next part is why this happened. So this could just be normal wear and tear from, from the soil um, hitting this tube, but primarily it's probably a seed tube protector problem. The seed tube protector um, basically uh, fits in right in front of this seed tube and is going to protect this from, from, from hitting anything. And so if you're seeing um, a seed tube that, that's broken on the tips and especially getting worn like this one has right here on the edge, if you see a line where it's rubbing, okay, you see a little bit of, of rubbing kind of scars here and if you feel it with your finger, you can feel something's been rubbing on that. That means the seed uh, tube protectors are probably worn out and they need to be replaced and they're going to basically going to sit here and, and, and uh, protect this seed tube as it's going through the field. This is just plastic, so we need to make sure that we're protecting this, otherwise it's going to get torn up pretty quick. Downforce adjustments allow 
allow us to uh, change the weight of the planter. We need to make sure that as we're planting through the field, we've got enough downforce to keep this row unit in the ground. We need to make sure we've got good ground contact, and that's going to be able to, to or allow us the ability to make sure we keep depth um, consistent across the field. Um, if we lose downforce, we're losing soil con or uh, planter contact, it's going to come up out of the ground, and that's going to affect our planting depth in the field. And on a dry year where we bring planting depth up, we're going to affect emergence, we're going to affect germination because of the dry soil that potentially could be there. Now, on the other hand, we get too much downforce and we're going to be putting too much pressure on the row unit and that, that's when we can actually create sidewall compaction, which could also affect uh, emergence in the field as well. It can definitely uh, um, uh, basically cause some of our root systems to be smaller in size due to that compaction that's in um, as a result of too much downforce in the row. Now with this particular planter, we use airbags for our downforce. We can control the amount of downforce going down, applying pressure, as well as an up bag. We've got a bag though that will actually help relieve some of the downforce. It'll supply air to this bag and lift up. So we, we do this variable rate, changing uh, downforce based on varying conditions throughout the field. Now, this can be kind of tricky to set going through the field because downforce is all going to be a determination of how full are our seed boxes, how much weight do we have for seed. If we have soil applied insecticide, that's going to be additional weight. And so uh, we may have a perfect downforce setting on our planter, but as we start to, to remove some of the weight from the seed and the insecticide, we may have to change our downforce setting. So that's why we, we do variable rate downforce through the field to help compensate for some of those issues. Some planters aren't going to have airbags, they're going to have springs, a spring system on here. And that gets a little tricky too, determining where to set those springs for down pressure. As a general rule of thumb, our studies here at, at uh, the Central Illinois Practical Farm Research Center, we found that about 125 pounds of downforce has been uh, about the perfect setting for us. Now, it's going to depend on what kind of planting conditions we, ha we have. Last year, for example, we had a very dry spring and we had to increase the amount of downforce to make sure we could get the road unit in the ground to maintain the planting depth that we wanted. Usually when we have good soil moisture, we don't want very much downforce. It's not gonna take that much downforce to get the, uh, the amount of ground contact and depth that we want. So just have to monitor planting conditions and adjust downforce on the, on the fly. One of the ways we can check downforce in, in the field um, is to stop the planter and uh, keep the planter in the field just like it would be planting and we can we can actually measure how much downforce we have on the row unit by checking these gauge tires and what we want to be able to do is just barely be able to turn these tires and, and that that's about the perfect downforce pressure in the field if we grab this tire and we can't turn it at all probably a good likelihood that we've got too much weight on this planter too much downforce and that's probably has it has the potential of creating some sidewall compaction if we go to this row unit and we can spin the tire just like we have now, that, it's obvious that we don't have near enough downforce. We need to crank that up to create ground contact. The final part of our planting system is, is our closing wheels. And this is a tail system that's designed to close the trench up properly, making sure we get good seed to soil contact, making sure we've got no air pockets where that seed's been planted. One of the things I like to do with a planter is make sure that these tail wheels, these closing wheels, are running true. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. One of the ways is on a concrete floor, you can set this planter down and pull it ahead while the planter's all the way down on the ground and it'll create a scratch where the disc openers are and you can actually line that scratch up to these tail wheels, these closing wheels to make sure that they're, they're running right in the center. One of the other ways you can do it if you don't want to do that on a concrete floor is use some type of rope or what I have here is a uh, fiberglass flag. And what I do is I run this in run it to my seat opener or my disc openers up front and then I can line it up in the back and you can see that this fiberglass uh, pole is running right in the center of these closing wheels and that tells me that that they're set up pretty true so it'll do a nice job of applying pressure and uh, closing that seed trench for me getting good seed to soil contact with no air pockets. These closing wheels are pretty important on the back of the planter and we need to make sure that uh, you can spin these these closing wheels and make sure that the bearings are in good shape um, and we're not getting any play in, in these units. Now, um, we've got a different type of closing wheel on this particular planter. These, this is a Great Plains planter and this is a spider wheel. One of the things you're going to want to make sure of 
Uh, some planters uh, or some growers like to have spike wheels on, on the, the closing system in the back. Others prefer to have a rubber type system. But one of the things we need to make sure of is check your tension in the back, make sure how these closing wheels are positioned, make sure they're running true. And if you're running a spike wheel, if they're not running true or they're getting too close to the seed trench, you've got the, the possibility or opportunity to grab that seed and throw it out of the soil. So we want to make sure that these aren't grabbing too much, making sure they're not too aggressive. All we want to do, close that seed trench, get good seed to soil contact, make sure we've got no air pockets. One of the things I like to do with a planter is I want to watch it going through the field and I want to uh, evaluate for how much planter chatter that we could potentially have on this, this planter going uh, through the field planting. And what I mean by chatter is actually how much movement or play we're getting side to side or up and down with that planter. And uh, we call that planter chatter. And the first thing, if, if you're seeing that on the planter, uh, one of the things that we need to monitor is how fast are we driving. If we're seeing a lot of plant, uh, a lot of planter chatter, we need to slow that planter down and, and see if that chatter continues. If, if, if it eliminates the problem, well, you've, you've, you found the, the situation that we had, we were just planting too fast. If the chatter is still continuing to happen, even when you slow down, we have to start analyzing the planter and find out why that planter is moving on us. Um, maybe we've got worn bushings in the parallel arms. We've already talked about that here today. If that happens, we'll get movement either left or right or up and down and we can fix that just by replacing those bushings. Again, the chains, the drive system on the planter, if it's catching, okay, we've got tight or rusty chains, we're gonna see that with planter chatter. We, we can fix that easily enough as well. One of the things we wanna do is check our, our, our gauge wheels, our depth wheels, to make sure we're not getting mud buildup on those wheels. If we're getting mud developing on the tires, we're, we're probably got too tacky conditions and we probably shouldn't be planting but we need to make sure we're not getting buildup on those tires. Not only will we get chatter with the planter, but our planting depth will actually come up. We'll have shallower planting if, if that actually happens. The last thing we can do is we can add more downforce to our planter to help eliminate planter chatter. Just putting more downforce on the row unit will keep it a more, solid, a more solid ground contact and it should take care of that movement side to side or up or down. One of the most important aspects to having a, a planter run um, in, in, in good operating condition is our seed meters. We need to make sure that every single year we're testing our seed meters, making sure that we don't have any internal uh, problems with these seed meters. It doesn't matter what type of planter you have for seed meters. It could be a finger type meter. It could be an air type planter. Main thing is we need to get these meters on a stand, work with a professional that, that, that knows how to basically run through a seed meter, can, can do uh, minor changes internally to the seed meter, and then test it with various sizes of seed. So this is an air unit here. We would wanna make sure we put this on a planter stand. We also have uh, finger units. Okay, these are really easy to put on a, a, uh, a meter stand, making sure that these belts are in good shape and making sure that we can have really good singulation based on seed size. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do once you put these, these units on a meter stand is tell the professional you're working with what speed you're running, okay, how fast you're planting typically in the field. Use that as your baseline and then take uh, an average seed size that you have on the seed that's been delivered to you thus far. Run that average seed size with your typical planting speed and see how these meters are performing, okay. Once you do that, you're going to want to take it a step further. Let's take our planting speed and move it up, maybe two miles per hour, faster than what you would normally run. Monitor the singulation, okay? Test these row units and see how fast you can run with that seed size. On the other hand, let's slow the planting speed down two miles per hour than what you typically run and see what happens to the singulation. If it gets better, you know you're gonna be limited speed wise and you're gonna to have to stay running at a nice consistent slow speed. If, it doesn't, if the singulation doesn't change very much with those different speed settings, you've got some variability where you can maybe plant a little faster, okay? Here's the other thing to do. Take your typical planting speed that you'd run and let's look at the largest seed that you have and see how the singulation is affected. Again, normal planting speed, two miles an hour faster, two miles an hour slower, okay? Take various size seeds and run that with your um, uh, seed meter professional and just get an idea of what's gonna happen singulation wise if you speed, speed up your planter or slow it down. It'll also give you um, a pretty good indication on air planters where your pressure settings need to be as well. 
These have been just a few tips, what we've talked about today, to make sure that your planter is running as smoothly as possible for this, this year's spring planting season. If you have any additional questions on how to set your planter, please contact us at Bex Hybrids by contacting our website at www.bexhybrids.com or you can call us at 1-800-YES-BEC. This has been Jason Webster at Bex Hybrids, Central Illinois Practical Farm Research Center. Thanks for watching.